Civil War battlefields, coal mines, and beautiful Appalachian Range. That's right, we're back in West Virginia this week. We're chasing smallmouth bass on the Greenbrier River. This is one you're not going to want to miss. That was bad. That one gets you in trouble. That's, that's the herd. That's the Cody, you got to try this. The great thing about being at the market is you never know what you're going to get. It's a lamb. Lamb? It's a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Look, your kid's on the schoolyard. Greenbrier does not get picked on. Did you just pull the pro fisherman card? Pro it was laying there on the floor. He picked it up. <laughs> Decent smallmouth. This is actually a pretty good sized fish for the Greenbrier. There he is. He hit it. Oh, yeah. Prehistoric species. It grows to be about 200 pounds. Use my knife. Flip it back. I want nice bite-sized pieces. This is gonna be the perfect bite for shore lunch. I'm here at the Capital City Market in the heart of Charleston, West Virginia. We're headed up to the Greenbrier River and I know there's gonna be fish on the menu, but I need some great ingredients. And the trucks have been backing up here all morning. I wanna see what else I can find. I've got these beautiful heirloom tomatoes, but they have some of everything here. You know, the great thing about being at the market is you never know what you're going to get. So, are you looking at these baskets of Georgia peaches now? Dakota, you got to try this. <laughs> oh, man. That is unreal. There you go. Oh, that smells amazing. I'm even thinking, you know, we're talking ceviche. So ceviche is a raw preparation using acid, but you know what? A little bit of this peach in a ceviche with the bass, I'm seeing us making that right on the water, and you know what? I think those would be just perfect. How do you say it? What? This. What is this? Key lime. It's a lamb. Lamb? It's a lamb. Is that lamb? A, la a lamb or a it's lamb? It's a lamb. It's a lime. It's a lamb. Sugar it's rice. liquid sugar. <laughs> you can put it on anything. You're right. <laughs> All right, there you oh, go. Oh, he's going to try, try this. Oh, wow. Mmm, <laughs> is that good? Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude. That's just... a little different than his uh, sardine, peanut butter, and banana oh. the other night. Yep, we had, we had a bet the other night that he was making a, a burrito with peanut butter and banana. We had some sardines there, so we bet him that he wouldn't do it. He ate the whole thing. It took him 20 Did minutes. Did he put maple syrup on it? No, but he ate it with sardines. It started like tickling my throat all the way down. Oh, that was fun. The loading style would have squashed him. <laughs> That's true. So technically it's still me? So technically it was, holy crap. Yeah, that looks like 20 pounds of Five pound box. <laughs> Don't open that door, I'm telling you. That's it. We're leaving the market. We're heading for the river. We had about a two hour drive ahead of us, but it honestly did not feel like that. We were winding through the Appalachian Mountains. I think we climbed over 4,000 feet. This turned into more than a fishing trip. It was more about Jeremy showing us where he learned to grow up and hunt and fish and camp in these woods. And this place was everything that he said it was. We've just pulled off to the side of the road here. Jeremy was just telling me that this is one of the most photographed places in all of West Virginia. You can take a look behind me there. Everywhere you turn, there's an old general store or a new shop. The last place we stopped, that place has been there for over 80 years. 
and these places are just tucked away up in the mountains here. I, I let me tell you, this is a special, special place. That's crystal clear. Hello. Here you go. Oh, I'm curious to hit it. Use my knife, flip it back. Oh, oh look, look at that. that. Oh. oh. Yeah. Doesn't matter what real company you have, they're going to start needing oil. We were wade fishing all day yesterday, so they got submerged several times from somebody <laughs> falling and getting wet. <laughs> But the great, th the great thing about the Akuma is you can just pop these two screws out and slide this little shroud back and get right in there to oil the gears. And I'm just using some Bass Mafia crank. Uh, any really good gear oil will work. But you saw how they were starting to drag a little bit. It was just bit. starting to drag and drag. And it doesn't matter you know, which real company you're yeah. using, that's going to happen. Well, you know what I kept doing? I kept checking the end of the rod. I, yeah, thought, I thought it was wrapped around the end. No, it's just these gears, when you submerge the reel, a reel's not waterproof. Mm -hmm. You're going to start losing some of that oil. But we fill it up really good and it may need it again through the day if you're wade fishing but we're going to be in the canoe the rest yep. of the day so that's not going to be so much of an issue i mean this is news to me i don't think i've ever oiled my <laughs> you've never i never oiled my reel that's bad <laughs> that's really bad now in those misty misty mountains you can see where they see where he got that name where he got that Part misty mountain area. mornings Yep. Dude, you have to. Let me put it this way. You name your kid something. If your kid's on the schoolyard, Greenbrier does not get picked on. I can guarantee you, he does not get picked on. Ready? I'm just trying. There's a hook there. Can we just load our gear right here and it can carry on? Yeah, absolutely. Who's Thanks. taking the helm? Who's taking the stern? I mean, those are those are sweet. I'm the guy. So, I'm the guy. I know my stuff. You guys suck. <laughs> Who's the pro fisherman? I'm taking the... You know, I actually have problems. Did you just pull out. the pro fisherman card? I didn't. He, he pulled it. too for early me. in the trip. <laughs> you pulled the pro it fisherman It was laying card. there on the floor. He picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Chef boat versus Bassmaster boat. Who's going to win? Oh, I like that. It's over. <laughs> it's over. It's over? I like that one. A beetle spin is... It's an 82 cent bait, but it's perfect okay. for small streams. When you assemble it, now the line's going to be right there, so it's going to run like a little small spinner bait. And you want to make sure that this is facing the same way as the spinner. Okay. So you can kind of get confusing when you're trying to hook it up there. So you just kind of imagine it running up the wire and around so you'll know exactly how to hook it onto the wire. Well, Jeremy, when did you join the canoe swallow? Recently. It's a new sport. <laughs> We're trying to make the Olympic team. <laughs> We're going to have a cross-country deal here. But if we win, America gets the gold. <laughs> this is the Greenbrier. This is West Virginia. Today is going to be a great trip. You need to get in the boat. Oh. There's nothing like floating on a river. Especially an ancient old river like this. That water, look at that. That's crystal clear. Decent smallmouth. This is actually a pretty good sized fish for the Greenbrier. Which the lower stretches are known for bigger fish. This upper stretch is where we're at. It's really small. There's a, you know, this is the upper size of what you're expecting to catch. Most of them is going to be in that 8 to 12 inch range. Yeah. But that's a beautiful fish. And since he's the first good one of the day, we're going to let him go. Now, I think that was pretty much one of the last fish we caught of that day. It was only 10 minutes into the trip, but it just started downpouring. We were expecting a little bit of rain, but not as much as we got. The part you don't see and we couldn't film because we literally had to put the cameras away is the half foot of water we ended up with in the bottom of the boat as we traveled six hours down the river, running into some dogs running across the river, chasing a bear up some trees. It was pretty crazy. We didn't get back to the cabin till about, I think it was nine or 10 o'clock at night. It was pitch black, having to drag the canoes up to the cabin. We started to dry out and started to contemplate what we were going to do the next day because all this rain was going to muddy up that water. Prehistoric species. It grows to be about 200 pounds. That was a squat shot. That's treason. 
This is going to be the perfect bite for a shore lunch. We go ahead and fish it. Yeah? This we can put a beetle spin on them. I didn't bring spinner bait. Well, you can't catch fish if you're not on the river, can you? And I wouldn't recommend someone that's not really experienced at canoeing to do this too often either. You know, on this small stream, of course, it's kind of a, it's one of those catch-22s. Um, but occasionally when it gets this high, it, you can just go right over top of the shoals. Yeah. But. I say we go for it. Okay, let's go, go for it. it. I'm listening to the prohibition. Oh, wow. I wonder why they call the Droop Mountain. Well, this is, <laughs> I don't really know the history of why it's called Droop Mountain, but there is a major battlefield, a Civil War battlefield is on there? Droop Mountain. But the river, you, you floated that section of the river you've seen. Yeah, yeah. It's just sheer cliffs and bluff walls, so there was nowhere to put a railroad track, so they just come right through the mountain. And this is hand dug. Imagine the work that went into that, hauling all that off. It's like oddball wood, like all different sizes of wood up there. You see that? <laughs> Custom wedged it's a, it's in. All, it's all wedges, but they're all different oddball sizes. Yeah. This is incredible. This is Look a, at this. This is a big thing in the So they had to come. Oh, so how long is this? Wow. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine what it is? No. Listen to the echo in here. This is so cool. You get into places like this and you wonder like how they ever, you know, built this and how you said this is an old railroad, right? That came through here, right, Jerry? Yeah, railroad. Hello! <laughs> Isn't that cool? That is some fresh water. You would be head deep from where we were yesterday. <laughs> yeah, and yesterday I was standing in the current and it was barely moving. We have really muddy water conditions. When we, we dropped our truck off, so we're floating from point A to point B, we had to leave a truck so we can get back to this one. The water wasn't nearly as bad downstream, and that's about uh, 12 to 15 miles from right here. When we come up in the headwaters, it's extremely muddy. It's not so much high, but the water color's really off. So we were expecting clear water. We had a lot of small baits, grubs, uh, Cinco. So we're kind of switching up. Uh, it's going to be, and we really aren't completely prepared for it because of our tackle, but we're going to try to use something with a spinner on it, more flash, maybe some crankbaits that put off a little more vibration. So something like this, this is actually perfect. This will go on a, a spinning rod nice. We're not going to expect to catch the numbers, but when that water gets up, you get a lot of flow. It does put the fish in more of a predictable location. They'll be behind a rock, behind a little point, anywhere that creates an eddy in the current. Well, look at this beautiful place. It doesn't matter if we don't catch a single fish today. The, just being in these mountains here in the Appalachians, it's just, it's honestly a really special place. And whether we catch a fish or not, I'm fine with that because just being able to film and fish and have a great time with everybody out here, that's all that really matters. We gotta come up with a Greenbrier song for this. Greenbrier song. The, the water temperature bo bothers me as much as anything because it's really cold. So what does that mean? Well, when you have an overnight, you know, they're a cold-blooded creature, you have a overnight rain flow like that where it really drops that water temperature, their metabolism slows down so much they don't have to feed. Is that right? Yeah. Right in front of that tree. What do you think of that buzz bait, Bailey? And you wasn't filming. <laughs> the one. That's our luck, isn't it? This is a uh, prehistoric species. It grows to be about 200 pounds. See how big he is, red eyes. They're dangerous. Do they teach you that in uh, biology? Yeah, well, the first thing that you learn is before you ever go to school uh, to be a biologist is, as a fisherman, you hold the fish as close to the camera as you possibly can. <laughs> That's like fishing 101. See if you can do it twice in a row. Oh, oh branch. I danced too close to the sun. You're fly fishing again. What is this technique, Jeremy? 
<laughs> this is back your back your stuff up in a tree and get ticks all over you. Really? Right where we're catching them, you just decide to throw into a tree, like not even close to the water's edge. That was a squat shot. That's treason. <laughs> See, he just admitted it. A gentle handoff. Well, that clearly was more than a hand touch. That was a hand touch. Well, that clearly was more than a hand touch. That was a here you go. <laughs> no. This is it. I was like, like this, and he dropped it. Got it. The squatch. It's another one of these giant predator prehistoric fishes. The elusive red eye. There he is. Oh, gosh, I missed him. I'm catching it. We were catching a bunch of those six to 10 inch rock bass and smallmouth bass. You can see that muddy water was kind of wreaking havoc on us. You know, those fish can really, you don't really think about it until you actually put that lure in the water and you can see they wouldn't be able to see that more than a foot in front of them. So it was creating a little bit of a problem for us, but we didn't really care. It was a beautiful day out. We were having a great time and we were catching lunch. There he is, he hit it. Oh yeah. Five pounder. Okay. I don't know if I believe you anymore. There's been a lot of embellishment on this fishing trip. That's a five pounder someday. Maybe. <laughs> Ten years from now. That's a good one. That's, That's good. a nice rock bass. That's a eater right there. That could be lunch. Is that lunch? That's lunch. Just lunch. You gotta go. I don't catch the camera, man. <laughs> now that's commitment. <laughs> Hook in his hand and he still didn't move. Really, when you're on a green bar, that, that's a typical fish. You're not coming here for big sizes. This is about a seven inch rock bass. They'll get, you know, a 10 or 11 inches of giant rock bass. But these have pretty good fillets on them. You can see they're fairly thick fish for small and they're just your typical pan fish. Just before we start by filleting this beautiful smallmouth bass, we caught right there on the Greenbrier River. Uh, I just want to say there's nothing like, and you've made it so easy because of the techniques that you've taught, there's nothing like getting one of these on a line. No, this is a really good representation of the size you're going to see on the Greenbrier. Now, it's not a, a, fit, a place where you're going to catch big fish or trophy fish. Now, occasionally there's a, you know, a bigger size, but yeah. this is a good typical size. And it's great to keep a few of these. This river is overpopulated. There's not a lot of food. Perfect place to keep a limb of these. You're never going to hurt anything keeping the legal limbs. Now, using your thumb inside the gills, it gives you a great hold. And what you want to do is just run your knife gently down. You see that's on a bit of an angle there? I'm going to slice all the way through. Then I'm going to turn my knife. And I'm going to follow the edge of that all the way down the fish. And as I do, I'm going to reveal that beautiful fillet. I'm going to take it all the way down to the tail and then watch this. Using my knife, flip it back. And if you can see that, I'm going to run the knife along. You can literally hear those bones. Then I'm just simply going to take, and it's really great to leave it attached at the end because you have a great handhold. Pressing your knife flat on a slight angle, and I'm just going to literally back and forth with the knife on a slight angle. I'm just going to take that beautiful fillet off. If you're looking at Jeremy, look at that. There's no waste. There's no waste there. I turn this over. You can see there's no waste. Now, would you believe off that tiny little fish? Um, what was that one in length? Maybe uh, 10 inches, probably. Yeah, probably 10 inches. And just a slight cut, I'm going to take this full rib cage out. There's really no belly meat there. And you can see how quickly you can take it. Now, look at that loin and that little bit of the tail meat. That is an absolutely perfect example of what you want to do. Spring water, so fresh. We're rinsing this uh, fresh cilantro for our ceviche, but uh, not bad when you can rinse it in mountain water. 
A ceviche is probably the quickest cooking method because it uses just a little bit of acid from citrus to slightly begin a cooking process on the bass. Now, this bass, I thought there's no better way to really enjoy the flavor and the texture of it than to serve it partially raw. I've got a few simple ingredients here, starting with fresh cilantro, then you'll see I've got peaches. Now the peaches, what I'm gonna do is just simply slice off very thin cheeks. And those little cheeks of that thinly sliced peach, those become the carriers for the ceviche. So there's no need to have a spoon out here. You just grab some fresh fruit and that'll be the perfect way to serve it. That'll bring the sweet. Now I've got a little bit of fresh jalapeno and always a little bit of finely diced onion. The last thing I'm going to incorporate is a little bit of ginger. Ginger is gonna bring some sweetness and another level of heat. Those things together are gonna to make the perfect bite out here in this beautiful wilderness. It is so easy to just take a couple extra ingredients in with you. We stopped at that market on the way in and got some fresh local fruits and vegetables. It just takes your dish to the next level, especially if all you can catch is a couple of these smaller fish. You add it in as kind of like filler with the fish. Now, we were living a little dangerously. Typically a ceviche isn't served with freshwater fish, but it was worth it. Ginger's great because it kind of comes with its own packaging. All you have to do is break off a piece and then use a knife or even a spoon to simply scrape off that outer flesh. That's what you want to get off just before you start to shred it. And right away, the flavor and the scent of it is just incredible. For something as delicate and refined as a ceviche, you don't want to have big chunks of the stem from the fresh cilantro. So just take a minute and harvest the leaves, pressing them with your finger and nail and just pinching them. Or you can use a pair of scissors. Either way, make sure to get those big tough stems out. You can see how beautifully white this smallmouth bass is. Those fillets, they look like Dover sole. And all I'm doing right now is I'm just going to run a nice thin slice. I want nice bite-sized pieces. The other thing I'm doing at this point is I'm making sure there's no bones left. I want to make absolutely certain nobody gets a bone. I actually just found one right there. Take and toss that away. Even slices and then what I do is I'll double this back and literally just begin slicing this into nice little bite-sized cubes. Perfect for the ceviche. Traditionally, you use lime, so you always use the juice, and often I see recipes that don't use the zest. Now, I'm gonna be using grapefruit because I love the flavor and the zest that comes off grapefruit. Well, it is just perfect. I think these bass are gonna love it. One of the most important things with ceviche is seasoning. Now, if you like it a little more spicy, then add more jalapeno and ginger. And the most important thing is to make sure that you get the right salt. So I've got a salt here that we got that's taken right out of the hills of West Virginia from Malden. This is gonna be something that makes it pop. Remember, it needs about 10 minutes inside that beautiful little marinade for it to actually begin cooking. But the best part is taking a scoop of this and remember those peach slices. I'm gonna take and make myself a nice little peach taco. Are you kidding me right now? This is gonna be the perfect bite for a shore lunch. It wasn't too difficult for you to do. No, I mean, if you think about it, could have grabbed this, a grapefruit, an onion, a jalapeno, and a little spot of coriander. That's all you would toss that in the bag, and you've got ceviche on the river at any point. Hey, there the you go. Oh, oh, look, look at that. that. Oh. oh, yeah. Is that incredible or what? <laughs> that is I good. That's <laughs> the deal with Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, awesome. That's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, you know what, we might as well... Cut, that's a wrap. Before we leave. Catch him with your hand. He's got a big trout on. Oh, man. Look at that. What do you think, Chef? We're going to try this one? I think we should give it a shot. Man, I love fishing.